The regulative principle of worship commits us only to worship God in the ways prescribed in Scripture. But the regulative principle doesn't tell us specifically what the Scriptures teach us about worship. And it's important to note that the regulative principle carries with it a negative corollary. Even if the Scriptures prescribe it, we shouldn't necessarily do it. In other words, there are commands and examples in Scripture that relate to worship which are not intended for our example. An obvious example would be the sacrifices of the Old Testament. Because the various sacrifices point forward to Jesus Christ, we do not now come to church dragging behind us an unwilling goat. Now, the challenging question, of course, is which prescriptions are intended for us as Christians and which are not, particularly when it comes to the Old Testament. A simple appeal to Scripture precept or Scripture example is not enough. Now, we all have our own worship hermeneutic, which we bring to our study of the Scriptures, which in turn influences how we interpret what we find there. Many people assume a sharp divide between Old Testament worship and New Testament worship. Old Testament worship, they say, is ritualistic, it's external, while New Testament worship is spiritual and internal. But such an approach does little justice to the sense of continuity that the New Testament exhibits with the worship of God's Old Testament people. This approach feels like a kind of liturgical dispensationalism, whereby the worship of God's Old Testament people, Israel, is sharply distinguished from the worship of the New Testament church. A more nuanced approach is to recognize the three aspects of Old Testament law in general, moral, civil, and ceremonial law. These represent three ways in which all Old Testament laws guide contemporary believers. Some Old Testament laws, what we might call the moral laws, are of enduring significance for all times and all places. For example, you shall not kill. Other laws, ceremonial laws, pointed forward to Christ and were completely fulfilled in Him. Because Jesus Christ is Himself our Passover Lamb, we as Christians are no longer required to celebrate the Passover, even though the Old Testament commands God's people to do so. Civil laws are those designed specifically for Old Testament Israel during their occupation of the Promised Land. These laws have now expired, although the principles of God's wisdom that they embody continue to be relevant for us. An example of civil law would be the requirement that the Israelites were not to harvest all the way to the edges of their fields. Now, that law doesn't apply to us directly today, even if we are farmers, but it does teach us principles about helping the poor that are relevant in every society that exists. Now, this approach gives us three basic questions to work with in our discussion of Old Testament worship. First, in what ways do these practices have enduring and universal implications for the worship of God's people in all times and all places? In other words, uh, moral law. Second, in what ways do these practices point forward to Christ and find their complete fulfillment in Him? Ceremonial law. And third, in what ways do these practices reflect cultural and local practices that were given to ethnic Israel but don't govern us directly but simply broadly in their general equity, as we might call it? If we ask these questions, that will help us to apply biblical teaching on worship in a coherent and consistent way that is suitable for our position in the history of redemption.